Let's suppose that we want to perform some material requirement planning. So we need to know some information about our manufacturing. In this case, we're going to be manufacturing planes. And our planes have sub-assemblies. The sub-assemblies consist of a cockpit, we have wings, and the wings also have some decorations on them. For the class activity that's associated with this, we're building those planes out of Legos. So let's see what we know about our manufacturing. We know that we outsource some of our production. So we're going to have wing decorations that are going to arrive on day 11 and on day 6. We've also outsourced the manufacturing of some of our cockpits and they're going to arrive on day 4. We currently have some inventory on hand, some finished planes that are ready to go out the door. We also have some wing decorations that are done. It takes time to make our components. So let's assume that it takes two days to do final assembly, three days for wing decorating, six days for wing assembly, and three days to put together the cockpit. We'll assume that when we order uh, inventory, there's a lead time of two days we need to take into consideration. We also need to forecast the customer demand. So we're going to assume that customers are going to want 30 of our LEGO planes by day 13 and 70 planes by day 20. To do our material requirement planning, we're going to need a spreadsheet that looks like this. So here across the top we have time and on the far left column we have the components of our master production schedule. So we said before that we expect the demand to be 30 units on day 13 and 70 units on day 20. So the first thing we do when we're looking at our master production schedule is we fill out what we already know. So we start with projected on hand. How much inventory do we already have? Well, we already have on hand 15 finished planes and 20 decorated wings. So let's go back to our master production schedule and we are going to put in our 15 on hand finished planes. So this row is going to go across as 15 until we have some additional um, made or additional arrival or we send them out the door. So for now we'll just start with the first three columns being 15. We also know that we have 20 decorated wings on hand. So we go to our wing decorations and our projected on hand is 20. Same thing here, this is going to go across and it's going to stay 20 unless additional uh, components arrive or we send some out the door. So let's go back to our information sheet and what else do we know? Well, we know that we're doing some outsourcing. So we know that 20 wing decorations will arrive on day 11 and 10 wing decorations will arrive on day 6. So let's make sure we go and put that information in. So we have 10 wings that are arriving on day 6. So here we have day 6. So scheduled receipt is going to be 10, which if we already have 20 on hand at that point, that means by the next day, sorry, even that day, we're going to have 30. Okay, so we have the 20 we already had, the 10 that arrive, that'll give us 30. We also know that 20 wing decorations are scheduled to arrive on day 11. And so we want to type in 20 for our scheduled receipt for day 11. Now, before we keep moving on projected on hand, uh, we'll leave it for now because we need to fill customer demand uh, that may impact this. So let's go back to our sheet. We've done the 20 wing decorations, the 10 wing decorations, and we now need to add the 30 cockpits that are arriving on day four. So let's go back to our spreadsheet and let's go down to the cockpit. 
and that was day four. So column E here. And so we have scheduled receipts of 30 cockpits on day four. So now that we filled in what we already know, our outsourcing and our inventory on hand, as well as our forecasted customer demand, we'll use our production times to work backwards. We also need to recognize that wings are shipped in batches of 50. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So let's start working backwards and we start with the final product. So we have gross requirements. Sorry, I put those in the wrong row. We have gross requirements of 70 on day 20 and 30 on day 13. That was our forecasted demand. All right, so since our gross requirement is 70 on day 20, and we need to figure out, will we have any already on hand? So we know we start out with 15 completed planes. And when the 13th day comes along, we have customers needing 30. We already have 15. So our net requirement will be 15. And since we don't have to order our finished product in batches, we can do lot for lot sizing, so order the amount that we need. Our planned order receipt can be the same amount, 15. Now to figure out the planned order release, that is when do we need these components to be brought in, we need to figure out how long it takes to make that final product. So if we go back, we see that final assembly takes two days, okay, and our inventory also takes two days to arrive. So we need to place the order for the parts to put our final assembly together four days prior. That'll give us two days for doing the assembly, two days lead time for the order, and that means we need to place the order for 15 parts for our finished plane on the ninth day. Well, that means that when our customers forecast, or when we forecast the demand that our customers need 30 units, we won't have 30 available for them. So after day 13, we will have zero projected on hand since we already had 15 and we're going to make 15 more. When the 20th day arrives, we have none on hand. So our net requirements will be the full 70. We know that we can order exactly how much we need, so our planned order receipt will be 70. And again, it's going to take two days to assemble, and it's going to take two days for our lead time on our order. So we need those 70 planes to that order to be placed on day 16.